Welcome to the lecture series of the course EE372 Biomedical Instrumentation. Myself, Reshma Matthew, Assistant Professor, Department of AAA, STCET. Today, we will be going to discuss about the topic Ventilators from Module 5. Firstly, before going to the topic, let us know why ventilators are required or what is its purpose. For that, we have to know about the mechanism of respiration. As we are aware, respiration is the process of supplying oxygen to the tissues and removing carbon dioxide from the tissues. This oxygen is supplied from lungs to the tissues and carbon dioxide produced are carried back to the lungs. So, the whole process can be divided into two. First one is inspiration that is taking in of oxygen and the second one is expiration that is taking out of carbon dioxide. So what happens when this mechanism fails? There comes the importance of our topic ventilators. A medical ventilator or simply a ventilator in context is a mechanical ventilator that is a machine designed to move breathable air in and out of the lungs to provide breathing for a patient who is physically unable to breathe or breathing inefficiently. That is, if a person is unable to breathe, in such a situation arises the need for ventilators. So ventilators are available both in automated versions and manually functioned versions. But modern technology utilizes computerized machines rather than the manual ones. Now, we will see the detailed explanation on the block diagram of ventilators. For the block diagram of ventilators, please refer to the previous figure. So, the block diagram consists of a gas mixture or regulator which is used for supplying oxygen sufficient air. Then, it is fed to the control valve whose function is to regulate the amount of air to be supplied. To monitor the pressure, a sensor is also placed and then from the pressure sensor, the air is fed to the humidifier or HME filter. HME stands for Heat and Moisture Exchange, whose purpose is used to help prevent complication due to the drying of mucus layer. We know the mucus layer is the layer which is surrounding inside the nostrils and also lungs. Okay, it protects the lungs and the nostrils from impurities and other and it also moistens the organs. Okay, so then the air is fed to the patient. The exhaled air that is containing carbon dioxide is fed to the exhalation flow sensor and then to the expiratory pressure sensor and is then given out through the expiration valve. So now let's see the various parameters which is used in ventilators. The first one is inspiration. It is the intake of oxygen and during this process the diaphragm will move downwards and this process is an active process. The second parameter is expiration. Expiration is the expelling of carbon dioxide from the lungs and during this process the diaphragm will move upwards and this process is a passive process. The next parameter is tidal volume or lung volume. The tidal volume or lung volume refers to the volume of air or oxygen for one breath and it is, it is measured in milliliters. Next one is breath rate. Breath rate refers to the number of breaths for one minute and its unit is BPM or breath per minute. The next parameter is minute volume. Minute volume is a product of breath rate and tidal volume and its unit is milliliter per minute. Next parameter is airway pressure. Airway pressure is a pressure in the airway or in the tube. The next parameter is inspiration peak flow which is the maximum flow of air or oxygen during inspiration. The next parameter is IE ratio where I stands for inspiration and E stands for expiration. So obviously it will be the ratio between inspiration and expiration. Next one is the percentage of oxygen. The percentage of oxygen is the oxygen concentration in the air during inspiration. The next parameter is compliance. Compliance refers to the measurement of elasticity of the lungs and the chest wall. The final parameter is positive end respiratory pressure or PEEP. 
and the, it is a pressure maintained in the airway or lungs even after expiration so now let's see the ventilatory modes basically there are four modes out of which two modes are important and are called as assist mode and control mode the other two modes are also derived from assist mode and control mode and they are called as assist control mode and imv imv stands for intermittent mandatory ventilation mode these are the modifications of first first two modes the first two modes are assist mode and control mode so let's see first mode that is assist mode so in this mode the patient will initiate the breath and the ventilator provides only the air flow but in the control mode we can say that the full respiratory function is done by ventilators this is in the case of patients who suffer from paralysis and are unconscious the third mode is the assist control mode so obviously it will be a combination of assist mode and control mode in this mode it is a combination of the above two and the base respiratory uh, rate is set in this mode that is the control mode and if the patient takes any additional breath which happens in the assist mode he or she may take the breath next is imv imv stands for intermittent mandatory ventilation so in this mode it is same as the assist mode but with the only difference that the ventilator will be entirely depend on the patient the patient will not be dependent on the ventilator but the ventilator depends upon the breathing of the patient okay so whenever the patient requires the help of ventilators only the ventilators offers its support okay that is the difference between the other modes and the intermittent mandatory ventilation mode next we will be discussing about the type of ventilators so basically there are three types of ventilators the first one is the pressure cycle flow so the pressure cycle flow is one in which is shut off when a preset amount of pressure in the lungs is reached and next mode is the time cycle flow which is set off when the preset time is reached the first one in the first case the pressure cycle flow is that type of ventilator when a preset amount of pressure is reached and in the time cycle flow type of ventilator it is shut off when the preset time is reached so what will be volume cycle flow volume cycle flow type of ventilator is one in which which is shut off when the preset volume will be reached okay so pressure time and volume it is easier to remember ptv okay the three types of ventilator ventilators are ptv pressure cycle to flow time cycle to flow volume cycle to flow pressure cycle flow is one in which which is shut off when a preset amount of pressure is reached time cycle to flow is shut off when a preset time limit is reached and volume cycle flow is shut off when a preset amount of volume is reached okay so it is easy to remember now let's see the ventilator controls the first one is called as fio2 fio2 stands for fractional inspired oxygen and it is listed as numbers between 0 and 1 a fio2 of 0.5 means that the patient will be receiving 50 percentage oxygen and fio2 of 1 means that the patient will be receiving 100 percentage oxygen so if 0.5 for 50 percentage oxygen and 1 means that 100 percentage of oxygen is received by the patient so next one is a respiratory rate so what will be respiratory rate it is a rate at which the ventilator is set to provide respirations per minute always double check this for accuracy and do not rely solely on the machine settings to be accurate okay so next control is the tidal volume tidal volume is the amount of air the patient will receive with each breath i think this parameters are already covered in the previous module so it will be easier for you if you prefer if you refer to the previous modules okay so next we will be discussing about the typical values of ventilatory controls actually there are no particular values for ventilatory settings it depends upon patient to patient but there are certain guidelines everything has a guideline okay so there are set of guidelines for a ventilator setting that is fio2 should be 100 percentage tidal volume should be between 10 to 15 milliliter per kilogram respiratory rate should be 10 to 15 bpm inspiratory flow should be 40 to 60 liters per second sensitivity should be 2 centimeter 
of uh, water then psi rate is 1 to 2 times per minute with the ventilation vt stands for ventilation okay and peep that is positive and expiratory pressure should be 0 to 5 centimeter of water so this is just uh, for your information uh, this is not required in the syllabus but just for information you just study okay so the next one is the next type of uh, ventilatory control is a peak flow peak flow is actually the velocity of air per unit of time and it is uh, uh, its unit is liters per minute then next is a pressure limit it is a preset cutoff for the machine in order to reduce the incidence of barrel trauma then there is sensitivity which is the amount of negative pressure generated by the patient as they initiate a breath that is required to trigger the ventilator into allowing a flow of air next is peep as we have already discussed then um, psi psi means uh, psi typically people increase the tidal volume unconsciously for two to time uh, four to time uh, two to four times per hour so that is psi and uh, uh, all those things are already discussed in the earlier slides next is we are going to discuss about the ventilator complications so there are basically two types of ventilator complications the first one is airway complication mechanical problem so airway complications be arises because of during aspiration aspiration may occur before during or in or after in intubation then uh, the other type of complication is most of the patients should have their hands restraints and pseudomonas pneumonia frequently develops due to contaminated equipment then the mechanical problems uh, or the ventilator complications arises due to obstruction of airflow, king tubing, then uh, cuffing spasms, then uh, disconnected tubing or ventilator, etc. Just study three to five points uh, uh, and remind. Okay. So the final topic is microprocessor based ventilator. So the microprocessor based ventilators has input from carbon dioxide analyzer as we can see from the figure the inputs are from carbon dioxide analyzer lungs machine gas analyzer oxygen consumption monitor and there will be a servo ventilator so the microprocessor will what uh, what it will do it will actually analyzes all these inputs and it will produce a controlling signal and the controlling signal will be then fed to the uh, the arrow direction shows it is fed to the servo ventilator and so as to get the correct ventilation adjustment in response to the patient's metabolism so this is the final topic uh, from ventilators and um, hope you understood about ventilators and the remaining topics of module 5 will be shared in the upcoming lecture series thank you